Hi, I'm James Nash. I'm from Six Ranch Outfitters. I'm a retired Marine officer and I've been guiding for 22 years. And today I'm going to talk about the hunting rifle and how to hit your target consistently. When you first pull your rifle out of the box, you're probably going to have to install the bolt and remove any type of chamber flag that is going to come in the gun. And that's just something that shows that the gun is empty. Once the bolt is installed, you can go ahead and install the scope um, using the scope mounts and the torque specs per the instructions that are going to come with it. So the things that you're going to need to make any hunting rifle function are going to be a scope and scope mounts. The quality of the scope mounts is really important. That's going to be the tool that keeps your scope consistently pointed in the same direction as where your bullet is going to end up. So that's a good place to invest money. You also want to spend about as much money on the scope as you did on the rifle as a rule of thumb. Uh, the scope system that I'm using today is the Tango 6 from SIG and this is the cross rifle also from SIG chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. These scope rings get mounted to what's called a Picatinny rail or a scope base and they'll get torqued to 65 inch pounds for the base and 26 inch pounds for the screws. I use a torque wrench in order to make sure that I get that done correctly. Some good safety precautions to have with you are gonna be high quality ear protection and eye protection. You're also gonna use ammunition that's specific to the gun. So since this gun is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm gonna use 6.5 Creedmoor ammunition. Once you've installed your scope correctly and you've got everything adjusted to be perfect for you and how it fits you, and you've got the right ammunition for your gun, you're gonna head out to the range and zero the rifle. Whenever you're zeroing, you're gonna to wanna to use a paper target so that you can see exactly where those bullet holes are so that you can adjust it so that your reticle, that's the crosshairs inside your scope, lines up exactly with where the bullets are hitting. I know there's a lot of new gun owners out there and congratulations, welcome to the club. The first thing and the last thing that you always need to keep in mind is safety. So I'm gonna talk through the safety rules that you need to observe all the time. The first rule is treat every gun as if it were loaded. The second rule is never point a gun at anything you do not intend to shoot. Then you need to keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire. That's gonna look like this. Keep the weapon on safe until you intend to fire. Safeties are different on different guns. On this particular rifle, if this lever is pointing up, the gun is on fire. If it's pointing flat, that means that the gun is on safe and it cannot fire. But we're always going to treat it safely. And the last rule is always know your target and what lies beyond it. Both parts of those are important. You have to know what you're shooting at and you have to know what's on the other side of it because bullets can go through targets. I want to talk through the anatomy of the rifle a little bit. And we're going to start at the front and work our way to the back. Starting here, we have a thread protector. The end of the barrel is threaded so that I can add a silencer or a muzzle brake if I choose to. The thread protector prevents me from damaging the threads. Inside of that, we have the actual bore of the rifle. That's the middle of the barrel, the part that the bullet passes through. The edge of that is called the crown. The crown is very, very important. As the bullet exits the barrel, the crown is the last thing the bullet contacts at all. So if that gets damaged in any way, you're never going to have an accurate rifle. This part is called the barrel. The barrel is just a pipe, and the pipe is what the bullet travels down. Inside of that is rifling. Rifling has lands and grooves. Those contact the bullet and cause it to spin. Different barrels will have different rates of twist, and that's how fast the bullet needs to spin. That's determined by the length of the bullet and the diameter of the bullet. The inside of the barrel is a diameter of 6.5 millimeters. That is consistent with the ammunition whose outside diameter of the bullet is also 6.5 millimeters. This part of the gun is called the handguard. These cutout sections that you see on it are a type called M-lock. M-lock allows me to attach different types of accessories to the gun. This is to attach a Spartan bipod. This is an Arca plate so that I can attach it to different tripod heads. This is also part of the gun that I hold on to, and because it's ventilated, it doesn't get hot as the barrel heats up while I'm shooting ammunition. Moving on down the gun, we have the receiver. 
The receiver is the housing that holds the action and where the barrel is connected. The barrel is connected to the receiver by a barrel nut. That's just a nut that holds the barrel into the receiver. This part is called a rail. This particular rail is a type called Picatinny and it allows me to use a lot of different types of mounts that are Picatinny ready so that I can mount a scope to the gun. This is my optic, this is called a scope. This is the objective of the scope. So when you see objective in a scope line, it's gonna come in millimeters and that's gonna tell me how big it is. This one is a 42 millimeter objective. These are called turrets. These turrets allow me to adjust where the scope is aiming. Over here, I have another turret that allows me to adjust parallax so that you can see more clearly at different yardages and to make sure that the reticle is on the same plane of focus as your eye for the range that you're shooting. I can also adjust the brightness of my reticle with, uh, with this turret over here. These are called scope rings. Scope rings come in different sizes, as do scope tubes. This particular scope is 34 millimeters, so I use 34 millimeter rings. Rings also come in different heights. So depending on how big the scope is, the actual outside diameter of the scope, I may need a higher or lower scope ring so that I can be consistent with that. A good place to start is medium. These nuts are what allows me to tighten the scope, the scope rings to the rail. Moving on back, I have an ejection port. Here I have a magazine release, and this is the magazine. A magazine is something that bullets go inside of. I can reinsert the magazine until it clicks, and then I know it's seated properly. This is the bolt handle, and this is the bolt assembly. If I move the bolt forward with a full magazine, it will chamber around. Currently, my weapon is on safety. As I'm moving back, I've got the safety, I've got the grip, and then I've got the stock. This stock looks a little bit different from what you may be used to. This is adjustable for the length of pull, which is how far the butt pad is from the main portion of the gun. I can also adjust the comb height, which is this cheek piece, and how far it comes up or down. And I, then I can adjust the height of the butt pad and the angle of it and some other things to make sure that this gun fits me really well no matter what kind of clothing I have on. This stock's also foldable so that I can put the rifle in my stock really easily. So to go back through it again really basically, we have the barrel, the handguard, the receiver, the scope, the scope rings, the bolt, the safety, the magazine, the magazine release, the trigger, the trigger guard, the grip, and the stock. Now that we understand the anatomy of the rifle and of the optic, and we've talked about safety, we can go ahead and start putting bullets down range. Now there's a lot of ways to stabilize a gun, but I'm gonna talk about ways to stabilize it just using your body, which is oftentimes all you have when you're hunting in the field. Okay, starting out, bolt open, magazine removed, and an empty chamber. Inspect it physically, visually, it's a safe gun. Still gonna treat it like it's loaded. I'm gonna start out with a prone shot. So for a prone shot, I'm gonna face exactly towards the target. And then I'm gonna lay down with my spine also facing the target and my rifle facing the target. I'm gonna support the front of the rifle as vertically as possible with my left hand. If you're left-handed, switch this stuff. I'm gonna look over the top of the rifle and over the top of the turret so that I can make sure that as soon as I drop my eye down into the scope, that I'm looking at exactly what I want to see. I get as much contact between my, between my body and the ground. Take a deep breath and let it out. Now wherever the crosshairs are after I breathe out is my natural point of aim. If that's not on the target, I need to move my body, not the gun. So I'm a little bit to the left, so I'm gonna move my hips slightly left, and now I'm on target. At this point, I can go ahead and put the gun on fire. Press the trigger. Gonna get a good hit out of that every time. This is the most stable position you can get in the field. 
Prone is only gonna work if you're in a place that doesn't have very much vegetation and you can lay all the way on the ground. A lot of times we've got to shoot over the top of grass, so we need a higher position. The next most stable position is gonna be sitting. For this, you're gonna cross your legs up under your body and I want the bone of my elbow to touch the bone of my knee. On this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. Tuck the rifle into the pocket of my shoulder, breathe out, settle into the gun and relax. Again, I need to adjust my natural point of aim until I'm on target when I'm completely relaxed. And press. That's the sit-in position. A position that gets you slightly more elevation that's really quick to get into is the kneeling position. For this, I'm gonna use all the same principles. Bone to bone contact, relaxation in my body, and natural point of aim. I want the bone of my elbow on top of the bone of my knee. Tuck the stock into my shoulder pocket, get a natural point of aim, make any adjustments that I need to with my body. Take a deep breath and let it out, <sighs> relax and press. This shot is really effective out to about 200 yards. The least stable shooting position, but by far the tallest and the fastest is standing. From this position, I'm gonna control the rifle by putting my left hand forward on the grip. I'm gonna control the back of the rifle with a good steady squeeze on the pistol grip. I'll put the stock on my shoulder and press the trigger. This is much, much faster than the other shooting positions, but like I said, it's the least stable. With practice, you can be very effective with this position out to 100 yards. One of my favorite ways to shoot from an elevated position is off of a tripod. When I'm hunting, I actually take about 90% of my shots using a system like this. The key is to have a good tripod with a good head to start with it's mounted to an Arca plate. What I'm going to do is apply enough tension to the ball head so that I can move the rifle a little bit and when it gets where I want it to be, I'll lock that down. I'll reach out and put my left thumb down on the right leg. Put a good amount of pressure between my cheek and the stock. Select fire, breathe out and press. And that's how to take a shot from a tripod. In a perfect world, you can always shoot from the prone. But if you don't have that, then you can try sitting, kneeling, standing, or standing with a tripod. If you can master the fundamentals of these shooting positions, you'll be able to take on any shooting situation that you'll encounter as a hunter. So we went over the anatomy of the rifle, how to be safe with the gun, a few different shooting positions you can use in the field, and then a demonstration of how those shots actually go downrange and hit the target. I hope you've learned something and that you can use it to experience success of your own.